Welcome to Euro PCR 2025 here in Paris. My name is Thomas Keeble. I'm an interventional cardiologist at the Essex Cardiothoracic Centre in the UK. And I'm delighted today to be joined by Nilesh Parikh, an interventional cardiologist at King's College Hospital uh, in London. Welcome, uh, Nilesh. We're here to talk about Nears Ivis today. Maybe you could tell me first what Nears Ivis is, so for the people yeah. at home. Thanks, Tom. So Nears Ivis is a dual modality catheter uh, developed by Nipro. It's the Makoto system and the dual pro um, catheter, which integrates 35 to 65 hertz Ivis, uh, but also has um, Nears near infrared spectroscopy, which can identify lipid rich plaque. Briefly, it can identify areas of uh, uh, lipidic plaque which are uh, seen as yellow on the uh, on the system and you also get two uh, digital outputs called the LCBI the lipid core burden index which ranges from zero to a thousand the higher the number the more lipid in that region. So maybe you could just elaborate a little more about the clinical evidence about how that helps you to sort of understand what, what they've derived so far. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. A couple of seminal trials, in particular LRP um, and PROSPECT2, have shown that the higher your lipid core burden index in non-corporate plaques is associated with MACE at, uh, at follow-up, uh, somewhere between 325 and 400. The PROSPECT2 study was, was unique and it also showed that plaque burden from the IVIS was important, uh, but actually that the lipid core burden index value somewhere between, as I say, 325 and 400, uh, was actually had additive prediction. And then adding to that, we have a study called PACMAN AMI, mm -hmm. which showed that uh, intense LDL reduction with PCSK9 in inhibition uh, led to significant reductions in, L in LCBI. And what was really striking was that that was then associated uh, with improved outcome. So it really is clear that this catheter uh, can identify the vulnerable plaque. So Tom, you know, I'm, I'm aware that you're one of the highest volume operators of, of Nears Ivis. How has it changed your PCI practice? Well, I think what I like about it is it democratizes plaque vulnerability. So I think we can all look at IVIS images, OCT images, and I think unless you're a true expert, it can be challenging to determine exact vulnerability. I think the beautiful thing about the NEARS and the chemogram that you get is it's very clear. Yellow is bad. High numbers above 325, as you say, is associated with plaque vulnerability and worse outcomes. And I think it allows all of us very quickly, simply and easily to understand exactly the vulnerability of that plaque. Secondly, when you see that, I think it does change how you treat and stent vessels. So you will often stent very slightly longer to cover areas that are vulnerable. Uh, and because you know that if you leave that plot vulnerability, you're more likely to run into trouble. So I think it allows really to personalise what you're going to do within that vessel, one hoping to deliver the best possible stent result for that patient longer term. And finally, if I see a really huge LCBI, so maybe more than 600, there's some very nice evidence that we should not post dilate these stent results because we end up potentially with uh, distal embolization and slow flow. Uh, and we know that that's often associated with bad outcomes. So I think it really allows you not only best in class IVUS to, with grade one, uh, 1A indication, but also plus this chemogram and plus all that other evidence to support and personalize the way in which we treat our patients. If I could move on, clearly this is an exciting field. Understanding quickly, simply and easily in your workflow the vulnerability of plaques both in your culprit and non-culprit. How in the future might that work in our favour for our patients and what is the future of plaque vulnerability and identification and treatment? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a really exciting area at the moment. Um, you know, identifying the vulnerable plaque through the Nears Ivers system, I think, has many potential um, avenues. Uh, one of the most interesting, I think, is the potential for DCB therapy to apply localised drug um, at the vulnerable plaques. There's an interesting study called WLRP, which showed uh, that at interval there was a, a significant reduction in, uh, in the lipid core burden index, perhaps cryotherapy also. So I think uh, you know, that's one potential area. Um, we're both involved in our National Nears Ivis Registry, uh, where we're hoping to link that with morphology and stent behaviour linked with MACE at two years. Years. So I, I think this is a really a rich uh, research field. So if I were to summarise uh, the three things about the Nears Ivers technology and catheters, 
The first thing I would say is I think, and you'd agree, it's the best in class IVUS. Mm. It fits beautifully into our workflow uh, and allows us to, with 1A indication, treat our vessels the best that we can. I think number two, it democratises uh, plaque vulnerability um, and bespoke and personalises the way in which we treat both culprits and non-culprits to deliver the best possible results for our patient. And finally, I think as you rightly say, there's a huge future direction of travel of plaque vulnerability and personalising how we treat that in the future with new technologies. And I think that's a really, really exciting field. Thanks very much for joining us. I hope it's been a fantastic session. Thanks, Tom.